the Kenya Film Classification Board has sounded a warning to online content creators using social media platforms to host explicit live streams. This after KFCB hosted officials from TikTok in efforts to ensure that content exhibited on its platform is in line with the community guidelines and the board's film classification guidelines. I spoke to KFCB CEO Joel Wamalwa earlier, and this is what he had to say. Thank you for speaking to us. Let's talk about your recent engagement with TikTok and what the nature of your talks was. What was deliberated on and what was agreed on? Why we engaged them, we wanted to deal with two things. One, content monetization, plan that they have for the Kenyan public and content creators. And the second one is on how content can be moderated on their platform. Moderation is basically classification of content, and that's our mandate. So we held an intensive discussion with them. First of all, we, we engaged them to study their business model. After understanding their business model, definitely because of the public concerns that are raised on what goes on to that particular platform, we had also to draw their attention onto it. Definitely how certain content uh, violates their own community guidelines and how it even violates the Kenyan uh, classification guidelines. And what was the conclusion of those talks and when do we expect to see tangible change? We have asked them that the lewd character, sexualized content that are being uploaded on their platform should be taken down immediately. So for them they have really, for TikTok has committed that content creators or users on their platform will, will really need to, to ensure that their content uh, uh, really abides by the Kenyan classification uh, guidelines first before you upload them. How will that one be realized? We have agreed that they are going to calibrate their systems in a manner that uh, once a content creator uploads his content, there's a step, uh, there's a measures that are put in place, and within that very process, a content creator will self-regulate, pick out some of those elements as you upload the, the document. So you tick like you tick like a box and you say, it has passed a number of uh, classifiable elements, you are cleared with them. Then on their back end, they will uh, start uh, or enhance the algorithm to pick out content that violate the community guidelines immediately before it flies. There's been concerns about the live TikTok and the hours as well when this happens and the fact that children are actually accessing these live TikTok sessions. The danger is it could be a minor who has accessed such a feature because many uh, parents have issued their gadgets to the, their teenagers. So they'll be doing that live, live, live feature and doing live, live, live program behind the parents' back. What we have discussed with the, with the TikTok is that, one, we have demanded that the live feature be disabled until they ascertain all the uh, credentials that are originating from Kenya. And they have accepted within their platform they can determine that such features are coming from Kenya. And to push more resources within, because it starts usually around 10 p.m. to, to 3 a.m., they have to tailor the algorithms to focus more resources on Kenya during that particular period, for which now they will take down. We will ask them that this live feature, if it's violating the community guidelines, should not run more than one minute stopped immediately and that account is disabled we will we will push further that the gadget uh, the IMA that is uh, the, that's running that particular live feature should be uh, that account should be disabled from running on that particular platform now it will be upon it will, it will be very difficult for a user to keep buying gadgets if your gadget cannot cannot run with TikTok you will not go, you will discard the phone, yes, and go and buy another one, then install. But that one, again, because it's your business, it's your bad behavior, 
then again it will be disabled. So and of course a lot of Kenyan youth make their money and their income from this platform and their concerns from other broadcasters who also make a revenue from advertising that these content creators are not being subjected to the same regulations. The level playing ground has really shifted. Many of these uh, youth have taken a pie of advertisement revenues. They are now creating content for different uh, corporates in the country, and corporates have chosen, have elected to use them, such that they can quickly uh, push their brands to their consumers. Uh, what we are working on is that, of course, we have spoken to such platforms that the payment models that they are implementing for our content creators will be done from within, such that the local content creators equally pay tax as the media houses do. They are making some of them are making more money uh, in a very short run, and they've got low uh, running costs. Some of these platforms have been operating in the country without paying statutory fees, and. As you know, when you want to plow back such amount of money uh, to the industry to develop it, it cannot be done if an industry is operating in Kenya, if a platform is operating in Kenya, but revenues are paid elsewhere in other jurisdictions. And as we close, your parting remarks. We, we don't want to put forward regulations that seem to claw back the gains that we've made as a country in terms of, in terms of access to information, access to, and access to many other other, other, other universal services. But for it, in terms of content uh, that is created in the country, and we have asked the, the, the platforms that we are going to make it deliberate, that they are going to carry close to 60% of local content on their platforms using their own algorithms. Because we, the argument is very simple, as you've said. You go to other jurisdictions, you don't find their Kenyan content. How, how is that possible? Yet this is a universal platform. Yeah. Okay? It is how the algorithms and, and their systems have been structured. If you make them open, anything will fly in. For example, if you're having adverts from other jurisdictions flying in this country, they're not even relevant to Kenyans. They are pushing for brands that are not even here in Kenya. How possible is that? Why don't we see that commercials that are being uh, uh, flight on these platforms are for local products and services? So in agreement, we are of view and we have pushed in, the, in, in, in our policy proposals that such platforms with their with their uh, business models, must push local contents, local con uh, locally generated content, local services, and content creators doing the same should benefit from such platforms. Many thanks. Thank you.